Welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving, a good Black Friday. I know I did. Got to hang out with my wife and family and friends. Got to have some really great food. Um, had a great time. Hopefully all of you guys did as well. Uh, for all of you who uh, weren't able to meet together for whatever circumstances that that uh, took place, you have my condolences. Um, so, this was a topic that was actually requested. And I don't always do requests. Um, like, my channel is not is not really anything in particular as far as um, a request service or, or, or I don't I don't take pay for for covering certain topics but I thought this one was really good to cover and uh, the more ideas that I I have on the drawing board the more I can work on the more I can slowly pick away at the better so today we're going to talk about how dog owners really actually crave human interaction how that's what they actually really need deep down inside also we're going to detail what can happen and does happen at a multitude of different ages what happens if people are not socialized and given the human interaction now as a side note as i was saying this was a requested topic bayou raptor was the one who requested this video so you can ha you can uh, thank him or her. So dog owners, they need to interact with humans. Now the need for human interaction. This is a disclaimer, okay? I always throw disclaimers in because I got to cover my butt. You know, when you're covering a really controversial topic, opinion. You know, the the opinion that we hold of dogs is very controversial and we get a lot of pushback so to make a blanket statement that you can't back up to write a, a check that your butt can't cash is a bad move so a disclaimer is always good this presentation is aimed more towards talking about the need for interaction that people who use service dogs and therapy dogs as a crutch and a substitute for human interaction. This presentation is not so much aimed at people who go to work, function like an otherwise normal human being, and just so happen to have a dog. I'm also not saying that every single dog owner out there is pushing a dog around in a stroller like a baby, living like a hermit away from humans but I am talking about those particular people in this video. This video is talking, describing people in the dogs are better than people category. Like, just for example, you know, um, last year, my wife and I went to uh, a, a, the supermarket where we live late at night. And th this was uh, prior to, to the, the C word, you know, the the C word that you're not allowed to mention in the video. Um, and there was a woman who had like a, a big hat on and she's just got this blank expression on her face. Absolutely no change whatsoever in her emotions. Just a blank dead stare. And what she got? She's got a freaking a dog, a little bitty ankle biter piece of crap dog dressed up like a baby pushing it around in a stroller like that is 100 percent mental disability those are the people i'm talking about so why is human interaction so important in this day and time really where we are forced to separate with covid and everything the lack of human interaction, I'm going off a little bit off topic here. I usually stick to the PowerPoint and stick somewhat to the script, but I'm going to, I'm going to throw this in there. The lack of human interaction that we've all had to deal with is so sad. Not being able to meet with the people who you care about 
and even to have day-to-day -day interactions with other people is so toxic and so harmful to us. And it's, it's gone on to the extent where when you get to see somebody, or at least for me personally, when you get to see somebody that you don't see very often, like I got to see my grandparents, my grandpa who had COVID, he was 80 years old, and by the grace of God and the grace of God alone, he survived. And when I got to see him, somebody who by all rights should have died, I mean, I, I, the only way I could describe it is there were sparks. The human interaction that, that took place between my grandpa and who had been in the hospital for eight months and, and finally getting to see him walk and talk and, and do these things, you know, what was, what was gone for so long and is now restored the euphoria that I felt getting to see somebody who I had already accepted it in my head that I was going to have to accept I was gonna to have to accept the fact that he was gonna die being reunited and getting to have that human interaction again there is absolutely nothing else like it I just wanted to throw that in there for humans, interacting with other humans at all ages is more important than some may know or would ever even think to believe. According to southernuniversity.edu, as humans, social interaction is essential to every aspect of our health. Research shows that having a strong network of support or strong community bonds fosters both emotional and physical health and is an important component of adult life. So, you'll notice emotional and physical health. It's not all just what goes on in your head. It's not just from a mental standpoint. It's a physical health standpoint. So, needing human interaction for babies. Okay, you got a little cutie over here with a smile. You may have heard stories from someone around you about an underdeveloped child and this is you know such a tragedy and it is incredibly sad when you hear these stories. You may have heard a story about an underdeveloped child who never grew physically really or developed mentally. Now not always but a cause of the lack of development is from what can be referred to as play deprivation. It happens when a baby doesn't get held or talked to or cuddled or interacted with, isn't given the social interaction that it needs. Like people who maybe they didn't want a child. And you know, that's a tragedy on its own you know there are I, I was I was not planned you know there are plenty of children who are not planned but but to take a child and just stick them in their crib and leave them all day feed them and do the absolute bare minimum so that they like they survive this is what happens Th they don't get the social interaction that they need and play deprivation is the name given to the idea that not playing may deprive children of experiences that are essential to their development and result in those affected being both biologically and socially disabled. Now studies show that as early as two months, two months in this world, a baby can respond to your smile with a smile of his or her own. So even as early as two months, two months old, a baby's brain can process your facial patterns and expressions and the sound of your voice and all the things accompanying your interaction and they can mimic it and they can duplicate it and their brain can understand it.
They can respond to your smile and your emotion with their own emotion. Human interaction uh, needed for children. So we're increasing in age a little bit here. For kids, okay. Socially isolated children are at increased risk of health problems in adulthood. Furthermore, studies on social isolation have demonstrated that a lack of social relationships negatively impacts the development of the brain's structure. So, if a child is kept from having social relationships, not only with, you know, other kids, but, but with people, you know, if, if uh, they're allowed to just, you know, hibernate in the frickin' basement with, with video games and, and, you know, never see the sunshine, it can, it can impact the development of their brain. Socialization, in fact, is an important part of your child's development overall. With social milestones helping your child to manage personal feelings, understand others' feelings and needs, and interact in a respectful and acceptable way. The need to interact with other children is quite obviously crucial for children. Not even just on a mental level, but on a physical level. It can literally have a negative effect on children's health if they are deprived of interaction with their peers. Now, real quick, back up. You know, they were talking about this uh, in another source that I looked at. I don't believe that I, I stuck it here. But um, children are suffering from increased rates of depression and anxiety. And if you look at the rate of online-only schooling that is taking place, the lack of social interaction with these kids has it has just been increased by this. The fact that the C word is forcing us to separate. If you look at the increase in anxiety, depression, uh, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, I mean, the curves just, they just go up. They don't go down, they go up. And now here we've got the need for human interaction for adults. Adults are affected greatly by lack of social interaction. And the effects can be seen from the results. People always have in their phones, shoved into uh, faces, shoved into their phones all the time. Um, <coughs> sorry, I thought I had a sneeze coming. Um, not getting actual face-to-face -face interaction, physically present interaction with other humans is common for many and you know I'm guilty of this too when I'm at work I shove my face in my phone and you know we're probably all guilty of this you know of choosing to be on our phone when we could interact with the person who's right next to us uh, physically present interaction with other humans is, is uh, not getting that is common for many especially in the day and time a virtual learning, working, meeting, and interacting due to our pandemic. Human interaction for adults continued. With so many people working from home and essentially being robbed of that physically present interaction, like I said, the rate of depression, anxiety, all those things have skyrocketed. You can, and, and here's, the, here's the crazy part, okay? You can literally lose your mind from being alone for too long. The question was posed on Thrillist.com. Can you go insane from being alone? The response was that being alone might cause you to hallucinate. If you take a healthy person with no history of mental health disorders and put them under great stress, their cortisol levels, now we talked about this in another, uh, in my video uh, 
the, the phobia of dogs is not a phobia. Cortisol levels, which is the stress hormone that keeps you alert after an adrenaline dump, the cortisol levels would be astronomical, affecting their ability to psychologically interpret stimuli. Over time, higher cortisol, that, that is higher stress hormone levels, can lead to inflammation, excess weight gain, insulin resistance, problems concentrating, and more. You know, like obesity and stress go hand in hand. There are, you know, the obesity rate is higher than it ever has been. And if you look at the way obesity and stress go hand in hand, most people aren't fat because they just love food so much. Food is a way to fill a hole. It is a way to get a dopamine hit. It, you know, food can be used as a drug to, uh, to mitigate that stress hormone that is present. You know, what do you, you get home after a really crappy day at work, what do you want to do? Eat a whole great big bunch of pizza and, you know, have a beer or whatever. And after that, man, you feel better, you know. Uh, overeating and, and insulin resistance and, and all these things, that goes hand in hand with this stress hormone. If, un, if left unchecked, these chronic loneliness symptoms can put you at a greater risk for more serious medical and emotional and emotional problems, including depression and sleep disorders. Now, does that sound familiar to you? What percentage of the adult population has all these things and will face these things in the future? This one really hits too. In an article writ by, written by stpaulseniors.org, lonely people are typically more prone to major psychiatric disorders and cognitive decline and have a increased risk of dementia. This one hits home really well, hard for me because, oh, hang on, let me, let me continue here. A sense of loneliness has also been associated with health risks that are equivalent to or exceed that of obesity or smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So that sense of being completely alone and isolated is the equivalent of on your health of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. How about that? Now, like I said, I can personally attest to the fact that social isolation in seniors is so bad. Someone I was very close to, I won't name names, was living in an independent living community. Now, he, prior to COVID, he was diagnosed with, oh, did I say the C word? Prior to the C word, he was diagnosed with dementia. Here, we'll just delete that word so that I don't get a ding. Prior to the C word, he was diagnosed with dementia. Now, he was able to stay on a routine, go for walks and exercise and interact with his friends. And he held on for a really long time, despite the fact that he had a number of different other medical conditions. He had, he, he fell a number of times. He kept holding on, man. He held on for such a long time. And when they took that away from him, his body, I mean, they took away his will to live, basically. And his body, I mean, it, it deteriorated It deteriorated so rapidly. At, at one point in time, um, hospice came in. The uh, basically end of the road nursing and care. I think they gave him like six months. He passed in like a week. His body deteriorated. He ended up passing away earlier this year. So I can tell you this one hurts and this one's fresh for me personally. Okay. So being lonely 
is bad no matter what your age is, as we just covered. Now, whether you believe in this or not, I'd like to throw this in here because this is part of part of um, truth. In the very first book of the Bible, where God was creating the universe, every time he created something, he said, and it was good. The very first thing that God declared was not good was for man to be what? Alone. Even if you're not a believer in the teachings of the Bible or you don't believe in God, you know, and I'm obviously not telling you how to live your life or telling you what to do here. But I'm inclined to believe that that statement was true. Considering how many studies we have on the effects of social isolation and the negative end results. Okay, so what's the connection, okay? Is this video just a great big list of points and facts that I made? Or is there a point to be made? The point, okay. So many people, so many times, we hear all these people say things like, you know, you got this meme. Woman bad, men good. Uh-uh. Men bad, woman good. Uh-uh. Men bad, woman bad, dogs good. Oh, yeah. Oh, dogs. What a good dog -o. What a good doggy. He just wants to uh, maul your child. And if you don't give him food, that's exactly what he's going to do. People, uh, the dog nutters say things like, dogs are better than people. I'd rather hang out with my dog than people. Blah, blah, blah. The point, okay, is that these people are not immune to these physical and psychological needs that they as human beings require. If you as a human just decided you didn't, you didn't want to drink water anymore and you were only going to drink pop from now on, you'd probably be okay for a, a good while. Like, you, you wouldn't just dry up and die. Like, you're getting some form of liquid intake but eventually you're going to suffer negative consequences from stuff like diabetes and weight gain and hormone disorders and a body that is majorly acidic dog owners who don't interact with humans are plunged further and further and further into their delusion that all humans are bad the less and less and less they interact with humans, the more and more and more their mental condition will deteriorate. And the worse it gets, the worse it will become, and the cycle repeats itself. I also like to throw out, um, it's, it's funny how, well, it's really not funny. It's ironic how these people will, you know, they got their butt kicked by, by a man or, or taken advantage of by a woman. And... You know, due to one really bad experience with a person, they'll say all people are bad. But, you know, five million dogs attacking people every year, that, that, that doesn't mean all dogs are bad. That, 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 that just means, you know, one person ruined my whole life. So all, pe all people are bad, but, but, but not, not dogs. That, that doesn't doesn't apply to, to dogs. Okay, yeah, right. It's embarrassing to see these people, okay, pushing dogs around in strollers. It's disgusting to see people allowing their dogs to lick all over their body. It is a waste of money to take a dog to the vet to save its life after it eats a whole bucket of Christmas lights. Or like, like I talked about in my other <laughs> video, if a dog eats three packs of underwear, the more and more these people deal exclusively with dogs, the less and less functional their brain becomes. The farther away they get from humans, the harder and harder it's going to be for them to re-enter that pattern of healthy interaction. People who only interact with dogs who cannot use language or give facial expressions and body language or physically hug and kiss you if you don't get the interaction and brain stimulation that you need it is not it's not optional 
It's not optional for you to only interact with dogs and not people. If you interact only with dogs and not people, it is impossible to be healthy, physically or mentally. It is impossible for you to be mentally healthy if you choose to only interact with dogs and not humans. Some of you, you know, we, we, look, we look down at these people and, you know, some of us may chuckle, but really, it's not funny. As funny as it may seem and as guilty as I personally am at laughing at people when I go into the store and they've got a dog in the baby stroller and a blank look on their face, it's not funny. These people who would rather interact exclusively with an animal who begs for food because that's all it can do, they're not getting the interaction that they need to function as a human being. They are not mentally healthy. And in many cases, recovery is not going to happen. They are so sucked into their dog addiction, the only cure would be to physically remove them from the place where their dogs are and put them in a home or place where they, were, they can be forced to interact with other humans under the care of professionals. For some, like uh, hoarders or clearly mentally ill people, this ha or, or this happens when family steps in, for most, but for most people it's not going to happen. Their whole life is a stinking diseased animal who will more than likely die before they do. And you know, when you talk about, you know, <coughs> excuse me, removing people from their home and forcing them to do this and do that, we don't live in a country where you can, you can take somebody against their will and, and, and force them to do what's right or to do what's good for them. You don't, like, we don't have that option. So, with that, I leave you with this. Do not take your friends and family for granted. Remember that as a human with a functioning brain, and in order to stay mentally healthy, you need to thank the people around you. They may drive you nuts sometimes. I know I drive my wife nuts sometimes. But you need to love and cherish the people in your life who have blessed you. Whether that's your wife or husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, your children, your parents, your siblings, whoever it is, even if it's one, just one of your buddies at work, or even if it's just listening to a stranger like me on the other end of your computer. Now, I can't be there in person with you, but I'm talking to you. You can hear the words that I'm saying to you. Remember that human interaction is absolutely priceless. It cannot be replaced or replicated or substituted by anything that man or animal has been able to come up with, dogs included. Next time you're tempted to stick your face in your phone, maybe think about the person sitting right next to you who is waiting for a mental exchange of thoughts, feelings, ambitions, and ideas. Love the people you have in your life, man. They are the most important they, they are more important than you could possibly imagine they are. Oh, remember. These dog owners need to interact with humans because it's a human need. You are no exception to the rule. I am no exception to the rule. Don't take your friends and family for granted. Love those around you. And... Cherish that person that is always there for you. This is Four-Legged Plague, reminding you to love the sinner and hate the dog.